This is our FE250 project bike, and this video is five simple steps to setting your dirt bike up. When it comes to setting a dirt bike up for yourself, the amount of parameters you can change are enormous. Small changes to different areas make really big differences to how it handles and how it performs. So before we get into turning our project bike into an ADV light bike, we need to get it well set up and working for how we'd like it to perform. For trail riding and exploring backcountry, most dirt bikes these days come with really good suspension. Our FE250 is no different. The standard setup is really, really nice. It's plush, it's comfortable, it's generally really good to ride unless you're racing. For that, it's a little bit soft, but that's a whole different story. The first step to setting up the suspension is to get the balance right. Most people call this setting the sag. Before you turn any clickers or fiddle with anything, you need to get the suspension moving up and down nice and evenly together for the weight of rider in your riding kit. If you're looking for more information on how this is done or what all of this means, we made a video about basic suspension setup. You can watch that up here. For my weight, we're gonna need to change the suspension springs. Most dirt bikes come set up for someone between 75 and 85 kilos, and with the standard springs, you can get it working in that range pretty well. I weigh a tiny bit more than that, so we will need to change the springs at some point. If you're a little bit heavier than this, you can increase the tension on the rear spring, drop the forks a little bit, and it's a kind of dirty hack to a similar solution. Long term, it's not the right thing to do, but for now, it'll do just fine. And the last step is we got the manual out and we set the clickers front and rear to the sport setting that Husqvarna state in the owner's manual. And it works pretty well. It's plush, it's comfortable, it does really well in the rocks, it does really well in tight technical single track in the UK. And overall, for what we're using this bike for, I'm really happy with it. Step two of setting your dirt bike up is getting the cockpit and the seat height right for you. Cockpit setup is one of the things that's often overlooked when people come to setting their bike up and they throw things like bar risers on before they've actually thought about the whole process. Now, most dirt bikes are set up for people who are between five foot eight and five foot 10. I'm not that height, I'm quite a lot taller at six foot two, and so most dirt bikes end up a little bit cramped for me. So for that reason, I've opted to run a tall seat. The tall seat opens the cockpit up a little bit more. It helps me move forwards and backwards a little bit better when I'm sat down. And it lets me transition from sitting to standing much easier. If you're a little bit shorter, you can go the other way and fit a lower seat. It will help you get to the ground a little bit easier. It'll make the foot pegs feel a little bit closer to you and generally tighten the whole cockpit up. Next up is the handlebars. Our Husky comes with adjustable handlebar clamps, so you can move them forwards on the top triple clamp, as well as rotate them in the handlebars. Personally, I like quite a low handlebar in a neutral position, but if you're a little bit taller than me, you may want to add some handlebar risers. Keep in mind when you do this, that small changes have big results. So a 25 millimeter handlebar riser will dramatically change the weight balance, and you may need to compensate for that by moving the handlebars forwards to allow you to keep your weight over the front of the bike. If you're a shorter rider, you can make some more dramatic changes, but they do come with some consequences. Most companies offer some form of lowering kit where you can lower the rear shock via the linkage system. It will make the rear of the bike lower, and you then need to compensate that on with the front end. You can do this through, by dropping the forks through the clamps a little bit, but all of this comes with some consequences and will need some experimentation to get the best balance. You can go one step further and have the suspension shortened by a suspension specialist as well, but again, it will affect the handling characteristics of your bike. If the forks are too far through the clamps, it can make the bike twitchy and it can make it tuck the front wheel. And likewise, if they're too far through the clamps and your bike kind of stink bugs out, you end up with this scenario where it doesn't want to turn and so you'll need to fiddle around with that to get the best balance. If you want a little bit more advice on handlebar setup and where to put your levers to find a good position, we've also made a video about that. Step three is tires. Tires are one of the most overlooked parts of a dirt bike setup. They make an enormous difference 
to how a bike feels and handles relative to the conditions you're in. We live in the UK and most dirt bikes from Europe are designed to ride in relatively wet enduro style conditions and they come with tires to match. However, we're in Portugal and if you live in North America or you live in Australia, those aren't your normal riding conditions. Fresh tires with the right tread pattern for the ground you're riding in transform how a bike feels and it can go from feeling slippery and loose under your feet and hands to feeling planted and comfortable and transform your confidence. The first steps are get your tire pressures right, make sure your tires aren't worn out and make sure they're the right tires for the conditions that you're riding in. This should be the first thing you always spend money on. Step four is bike protection. When it comes to choosing your protection for your bike, you'll find it's very personal. It's generally proportionate to the amount you're falling off and the amount you're likely to damage your bike. And so as you get better, you'll find you need to add less parts. Our FE 250 comes with a really good standard plastic sump guard. Plastic is generally the choice for bike protection parts because it's light, strong, and it doesn't affect the frame flex in any way. Our FE also comes with a pretty nice standard handguard. It's strong and effective, but there is one part that's quite important to add to enduro bikes. A little bit of engine case protection can go a long way, and especially in more difficult terrain, it can be quite easy to puncture the clutch case. So we added a clutch case protector. The last step of improving your dirt bike is the engine. Handling is so important on a dirt bike that it's always best to get the handling sorted first before you go spending money on improving the engine. Most four-stroke dirt bikes in 2020 have fantastic engines and they don't really need a huge amount of tweaking for trail riding and generally enjoying your bike. If you're going racing, it's a little bit of a different matter, especially as you get better and you're asking for more from your engine, but for the most part, enduro bikes are really, really good. Our FE 250 is no different. Generally in stock trim, it's great. However, we felt that there was a little bit of a flatness to the mid range and we'd like a little bit more pep, especially because our end goal with this is to turn it into an ADV light bike. And we wanted it to have a tiny bit more legs, a better ability to carry a higher gear and generally make its life easier. So when it comes to improving the engine and the power output of a bike, the first step is always the exhaust. It's the easiest step to making the bike work better. It's a bolt-on solution and you generally get quite good power gains over a stock exhaust system. The muffler on its own doesn't make a huge difference, so we opted for a full system. It's from the Husky Power Parts catalog and we've gone for the FMF Mega Bomb and Q4 exhaust because it gives us a good power gain with a nice quiet exhaust note. This is a trail bike and ultimately we don't wanna create a bike that's loud and obnoxious and causes a problem. And that's it. Those are the basic steps for getting comfy on your dirt bike and getting your dirt bike working well in a quite simple, non-time heavy manner. When it comes to making a dirt bike better, you can get really, really in depth. You can change a huge amount of parts and move things in different directions by small amounts and completely transform or ruin your bike's handling. This is especially true of suspension setup. Generally, the basic suspension setup is good for play riding, fun riding, and if you're going racing and you want to extract a lot of performance from your bike, you can. However, it's really important that when it comes to setting up a dirt bike, you don't start blaming the bike for things that are wrong in your riding. That can be really easy to do and we can look for solutions in suspension changes and so on that can be solved by getting slightly better technique. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, hit that subscribe button because we've got a lot more dirt bike videos coming while we transform this bike into an ADV light bike and see what a 250F can really do. We've got links to all the products we've used so far in this video and links to all the videos that we've referenced in the description below. And remember, life's better when you're riding. Also, if you want that on a t-shirt, you can get that down below too.